Hello, it's Thursday the 14th of April. Just getting my day going. Check your settings. The volume is fine on the video. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, I'll do some pulls today because I didn't play any records. Well, I didn't. One record yesterday, Walker Brothers. I rehearsed and I worked on reading music and um, editing some of the scores for my tracks. Um, I've discovered that um, the MIDI files translate some of the percussion tracks and then you have to um, either eliminate them or bring them in key. So slowly I'm um, acclimatizing myself to reading music and understanding which notes are what and the values. It's a good discipline for me. Um, and I just want to say again, after taking a quick look on um, social media, because um, I'm just really... Um, not dealing with Facebook very much right now since it um, seems to be fucking with everybody. You know, I just um, leave a message and I leave uh, as opposed to spending a lot of time on there like I often have. But I see a lot of messages. I mean, a lot of messages of people who are having mental problems and emotional problems for any number of reasons. And I'm just sharing... I'm struggling too, but I also understand a big part of what's going on with us, which is our minds, the way we're processing things. There's a lot of stuff that people have been taught and that people believe and accept as reality that doesn't work for them. And yet this is what they think reality is. And so they're stuck and they're miserable. And I see it a lot in people's comments. Also, when I talk to people, it's like, why are you believing that? You know, what makes you think that is? And then there's just a real desperate clinging on to the idea that somehow there's an answer outside of me that's going to fix my problem. It's just, I think we know from the beginning of um, recorded time that that just ain't true. Not when it comes to affairs of the um, of being human. Fixing stuff like cars and buildings and and all that stuff. Of course, we can work together and find solutions. And but personal work is work that we have to do. And finding a guru isn't the answer because the guru, if a guru is any good, he's just going to he's the guru. He or she is just going to point you back to yourself. Note what the how you spell the word guru. G U R U. You're it. Okay? No escaping. Get to work. So that's what's on my mind. And I just hope everyone's okay. I saw a couple of posts this morning from some friends who I spoke about. And one in particular, I won't say his name. He went ahead and started talking a little more on Facebook about his current struggle. And um He's very intelligent. This is one of the other things that can happen, is that when you're, you can over-intellectualize, and this person's ego is out of control, and that's why they won't surrender, you know, surrender, you know, and get out of the boat that is rushing down the stream of your thoughts that are just driving you mad and over the edge. Get out of the boat. Go stand on the on the uh, shore and watch watch the watch them go by you can do it that's what they call meditation all right i've been going on but this is my channel someone mentioned in a recent video that they thought that my i could make some really cool mix mixes on mixcloud see again that's why it can be a little um cranky because it's like I already thought of that I did that years ago I have a bunch of mixes on Mixcloud and I lost track of them that was years ago so if you go on Mixcloud and search my name Derek D-E-R-E-C-K Higgins 
H-I-G-G-I-N-S, you can find my uh, page and there are some there are some mixes that I put on there years ago, you know, it was fun at first. And of course, yes, the last few folks who have said, have you heard this, have you heard this? Sure have, sure have, no kidding, sure have. So again, let's just do a full in a real obvious space. What do we have? Oh, my, my, my. Jimmy Giuffre 4, Dragonfly. Some fine jazz here. And um, Jimmy Giuffre is a, um, I think, an undervalued and under listened to um, jazz musician. Uh, flute, bass flute, soprano, tenor sax, clarinet. And he's also an explorer. He's done, done some albums where it's not straight jazz, but he messes around with electronics. I quite like his um, stylings and um, haven't listened to Jimmy Dupree in a while, but the thing that I can tell you that I remember about him is that you don't hear him sounding like, oh, he sounds like Charlie Parker. Now he sounds like Lester Young. Oh, that's a little bit of Ornette. No, ain't none of that going on. He really has an original voice. Jimmy Giuffre 4, Dragonfly. Cool, I haven't played that in a while. Um, I have been watching a few videos, and um, some of it is enjoyable. I do see that some of you folks uh, have some very cool collections and actually learn some things from you. <coughs> I'm not a know-it-all, I just know what I, how I like to do things, that's all. <laughs> Let's go straight back here again keep it simple because it's just there's just so much right here rather than getting that spine that's obvious let's try to get the one what is this the next to it oh see this is my craft work K's craft work that's my the mix a lot of people not a lot but I've heard many I've heard several friends of mine kind of poo-poo the mix um, I particularly like the remix version of the robots on here the white vinyl re uh, issues they did re recently. I got as many as a, of them as I could. I stopped from getting the uh, German language versions because that's how there's that's the only difference is the language. Got to see Kraftwerk the first time they came to America on the Autobahn tour with Pavlov's dog opening. Very interesting show, and it was the first time I had seen a concert like that. It's very cool. Okay, we'll go, we'll go over here. Let's see what's... Okay, we have these sticky ass... Here's something I need to listen to. Sloan, the double cross. This was given to me by my friend Le Randy LeMasters, who has um, put some of my music out on um, CD and digital sex. He's a big fan of this band. Now, I like pop. And there's a Beatles-esque thing going on with the way these guys write, if I remember correctly. However, I must admit that when I play Sloan, they don't draw me in. It's like I listen, and then I take it off. Um, I appreciate very much Randy sharing this with me. It's why I keep it, and it's also I know they're good, so this is something I need to listen to today. Not need to, but it's like... Well, I can listen to this today. And that's good because if I were to look at the spine, I would just pass it up. So let's see what Sloan has for me today, okay? Okay, I'm going to go over here into my um, area where I seldom go, which is a lot of um, compilations. And what did I get? Look at this. John McRae, if you happen to see this, it got damaged, unfortunately, but John... McRae sent this to me. Past, present, future. It's a sampler of um, of progressive rock bands. And um, this is cool. You know, it's like... Um, it's just kind of cool to, to um, get to hear uh, this music and have it on vinyl. Yes, the Urfa, Netherworld, 
haven't played this in a while but John if you happen to see the video thanks I don't always remember who sends me what that's this one I can remember right away okay back over here again oh dig deep it take something that's not easy to grab that's okay what did I get <laughs> Well, talk about a, a, a ubiquitous album. This is one of those albums when, when they had the huge hit and it was all over, then you just saw these everywhere in, in um, thrift stores, used records. Um, Chariots of Fire by Vangelis. And it's beautiful. But that's the, the thing, you know, it's like I don't follow popular culture to um, follow music because it just cheapens it too much to me. So this is a beautiful album, but you know I never play it. But I do keep it. It's part of my Evangelist collection. Okay. Let's keep going for a while. Down. Back. This way. Oh, what do we got? What do we got? New percussion group of Amsterdam with Bill Bruford and Keiko Abe. Go between. Another one I haven't listened to very often, but um, it's the kind of thing that I like. Okay, this is great. This has given me some good stuff to listen to that I wouldn't choose otherwise. But this is a keeper, you know, not just because of Bill Bruford and Keiko Abe. But this is probably very good. I don't remember it. So that's two for the turntable today. Sloan and New Percussion Ensemble. Okay. Ooh. So let me just do one more. I'll go to a place that I seem to know everything, which is why I don't go there. And let me see if I can get one of the records that's in between everything that I know. This is pretty good. Here's one of my um, survivors of my punk rock collection. MDC, Millions of Dead Cops. Corporate Death Burger. This, to me, is a classic of a hardcore punk. Dick for Brains, I Hate Work. Happy to say that I've played with MDC, open for them. This is one of the shows where the leader of the band, John, after we got done, well, he came out and watched us because my band are already up. I'm not kidding, you know, anyone that's seen us knows we blaze, we'll kill you. Um, when we opened for the Dead Kennedys early on in our um, time as a band, um, Jello Biafra came out and said, why'd you guys do that? You just fucking blew us away. <laughs> he said, that doesn't very often happen. And we stayed in touch as a result um, after the show. And um, you could, if you know Jello, you could ask him, hey, show me that record by Derek Higgins you have, the one with the finger, it's very rare he has a copy and he sought me down he sought me out to get a copy years later after the dead kennedy show something similar mdc the lead singer of the band raf is playing and we're just ripping it up and i look out and there he is looking at us like this because we 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 i love it we kill <laughs> And so afterwards, you know, um, he he said something to the sa to the same effect of, "You guys didn't have to do that." <laughs> I said, "Oh, I guess you guys have to work tonight, huh?" He said, "Fucking a." <laughs> I love it. MDC, Millions of Dead Cops, classic hardcore punk. Good times. I've had more good times than bad with my experience being in the punk rock scene, as it were, here in the Midwest. More good times than bad. And I've actually had it where I won over the Nazi punks here locally <laughs> um, because of my background in mental health. I was at a war zone show. And um, they had um, the war zone bass player, mentally ill, breaking down on the on the road, 
didn't know if he was going to be able to make play the show that night because he was just out of it. So they hooked him up with me. I was at the show to go to the show. I do have skills, and so I was able to help him orient enough to play. As a result, the majority of the uh, skinhead punks uh, rallied around me to protect me from the other boneheads that were at this particular show in a well-known racist part of Omaha. Omaha. Well, actually, it's out in one of the suburbs, playing in Rol Ralston. Good memories, good memories. I'll do one more pull, okay? I'll go down here, because I just never go down here. Okay, what do we got? See, I kind of know my areas in this. I'm in the Stranglers area. Love the Stranglers, never got to see them. I don't think the Stranglers, the Stranglers themselves said they were never a punk band. They were just lumped in with that, all that product um, selling and shit that the business does. This is a Japanese um, EP. Don't Bring Harry is uh, on here. In the Shadows. Bring Harry is the, um, is the highlight on here, and it's a very nice Japanese pressing. That's what I'll share today, folks. As always, let me know how you're doing. Hope you're okay. There's nothing to say about the news. It's insane. Talk to you later.